Hello and welcome to the IRS Rail webinar session on optimizing rail resource management during uncertain times, produced by the International Railway Summit in association with Goal Systems. I'm Jules Omura, the Managing Director of Iris Events, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all to this session. Rail and public transport operators worldwide are desperately suffering from the impact of COVID-19. Uh, for businesses, one of the worst aspects of the pandemic is uncertainty. Railways rely on years of past data to predict the demand and plan their services, fleet rotations, staff shifts and maintenance schedules. What happens when all that past data becomes redundant? What should rail and transit operators do to minimize disruptions and optimize their resource planning? We'll be exploring these questions today. I'm excited to have the support of rail sector leaders and experts as speakers with us today. In particular, we are fortunate to have the support of Goal Systems, the resource management and optimization specialists, represented today by Eric Casillas, which allows us uh, to have this important debate. We're equally grateful to Austrian Federal Railways, Kurt Bauer, New Jersey Transit's Lukman Fazal, and the independent consultant, uh, Davin Dasandu, uh, for their contributions to this webinar and indeed to the wider rail community do, during these uh, difficult times, as it's now more important than ever to share best practices. If you want to know how you can support our future webinars and participate in the debate, do get in touch with us. We are tweeting live during this webinar. Follow us at, at Rail Summit, and uh, please use our hashtag. You can see on your screen, IIS Rail Webinars. If you enjoy this session, uh, do continue the debate on Twitter and LinkedIn. Now, it's, um, uh, uh, I'd like also to explain to the audience how you can uh, ask questions. Um, uh, so the, there are two ways of asking questions. Uh, you can uh, raise hand and speak. Uh, uh, so this is available in the chat uh, screen, chat uh, part of your, your screen. And there's a, at, the, at the bottom, there's a hand uh, uh, icon where you can you can uh, press and you can identify, you can indicate that you'd like to speak and, and one of our colleagues will get in touch with you to, to turn on your microphones. Um, you can alternatively um, type in your questions in the Q&A section uh, to ask questions as well. And uh, Davinda will be taking uh, uh, some of those questions um, up with the uh, speakers. Um, so, um, now it's my uh, pleasure to introduce you to uh, our moderator for today, Davin Desandu. Uh, we had a last minute uh, situation when our original moderator became unavailable um, and Davinda kindly agreed to step in at very short notice. I'm very grateful uh, to you, Davinda. Uh, Davinda moderated one of the sessions very skillfully at our eighth International Railway Summit in New Delhi last year and we were very reassured when he accepted uh, a request to, to moderate this session. Davinda has over 28 years of experience in governance, infrastructure, project planning and operations and maintenance. Most recently, he was partner and national head of transport and logistics at KPMG India. And uh, his high profile career positions have included uh, director of infrastructure at the Indian Prime Minister's office and board officer at the World Bank in Washington, D.C. Earlier in his career, Davinde was head of network operations for New Delhi at Indian Railways. So as you can see, he comes with uh, both practical and governance experience, which makes me a, a perfect moderator for today's debate on optimizing rail resource management during uncertain times. So Davinde, over to you. Thank you, Jules. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. And I think uh, uh, there's uh, vast ocean of experience that uh, we have here today uh, with the presenters who have come on steam. Uh, it's uh, very heartening to see that uh, you've gotten together a very good audience and very good uh, presenters uh, at a very difficult time uh, in, in, in human history, uh, but uh, specifically so uh, for transport and logistics and the railways, uh, which are the prime public interface uh, of moving both passengers and freight uh, in most countries uh, globally. Uh, so, so, so welcome to everybody. Uh, you know, clearly, I think COVID uh, is affecting uh, uh, passenger and uh, staff behavior, uh, of course, immediately in the short term, but even in the medium term. And I think our effort is uh, uh, as professionals to get together and share ideas and thoughts with each other 
about how we ensure that this medium term uh, does not become the long term and we are able to roll back, uh, you know, our, some of our stellar roles that we play across countries, across the world uh, in the rail sector. Uh, in particular, railways is very intensive teamwork, you know, whether we look at customer facing uh, staff or we look at maintenance uh, and overhaul staff uh, across fixed assets as well as rolling stock, it's all teamwork. And this pandemic is affecting very crucial parts of the teamwork, how teams operated both for running as well as maintaining the railway system. Uh, railway system will also be affected by the changes that are happening at the interface points. I mean, cities are, you know, living differently. There's a whole new paradigm of urban mobility that's coming in place. Uh, you know, so all those interface points are also going to affect us. Uh, it's also seen that, you know, the last nine months of revenue losses and and the slow business that we are seeing now uh, also impacts railway investments. And I, I see a number of public and private balance sheets under stress, uh, both for current projects uh, and some projects uh, have gone off uh, the planning table. And the, in fact, and the impact on freight is devastating too, uh, with core sectors of the global economy, uh, you know, trailing and in trouble. Uh, I was uh, uh, surprised to see, uh, rather, you know, uh, sad to see that Grand Central Rail announced that they have permanently abandoned plans for Northwest route between Blackpool and London. Uh, you know, COVID-19 simply made the financing of the new venture impossible. Uh, therefore, I, I am also heartened by the fact that all of us together and railway leaders have been uh, exhibiting some quick actions to roll back the difficult times. A number of global advisories have been issued by WHO, by the UIC, uh, and you know, CDC and other various regulators across the world. Uh, there are advisors, advisories in occupation, health and safety. Uh, services are coming back online and I think industry managers uh, have been experimenting with new processes and systems in a post-pandemic world. And I, uh, I, I think we will all see what uh, uh, Kurt and Lukman are doing on their systems and take learnings from there. And at the same time, also understand thematic uh, how data and science can help us to do that. Uh, I also feel that we all need to get together as professionals to advocate the fact that, uh, you know, hardworking as these efforts are, they will need assistance from public authorities. Uh, uh, in the light of the fact that the industry is uh, being fairly prompt in taking action to come back on steam. Uh, this is particularly, uh, you know, a bit of a hard one on us, uh, rail professionals and transport professionals, because uh, for various reasons, rail industry has been on a renaissance path uh, for the past some time. And therefore, we hope uh, that our, our, our combined learnings uh, from our colleagues uh, helps us to continue that surge as, as a green and sustainable mass mover of, of passenger and cargo. Uh, so therefore, we are here today to discuss some of the excellent actions that have been commenced uh, on, on the Austrian rail by, by Kurt and his team on NG Transit uh, uh, by Lukman and his team and Gold Systems uh, and Eric will, uh, you know, give a, give, a, give a picture of how the leveraging of data and information science can, can help us uh, on a faster recovery uh, in, in this direction. Uh, so welcome uh, to everybody. It's, it, this is a fantastic uh, opportunity uh, for all of us to get together and learn from practitioners in the field uh, and take those learnings back to our own organizations. So thank you, thank you, Jules. I'm back to you for the moment. Thank you, Davinde. So before we go into the first um, uh, presentation uh, from Kurt, um, we have a poll uh, that we'd like uh, to um, ask the audience to take part in. Um, so if, uh, um, if my uh, colleague can uh, share the poll. Yes, thank you. Um, so, what effects will COVID have on the long distance and high speed passenger rail market uh, share in the next five years? Um, so, if you can choose from the, one of the five options here. Um, so, it's, is it a significant increase compared to pre COVID? Uh, for example, because of EG Green, uh, EU Green Deal um, causes, uh, causing a real shift? Um, or is it B, increased uh, 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 smaller but increased compared to pre COVID level? Um, because of, uh, for example, aviation cannot win back all the passengers and people moving to rail. Um, or is it C, staying at pre-COVID level? Uh, or is it D, um, uh, decrease uh, compared to pre-COVID levels, uh, for example, because of cost savings of individuals and businesses? Or is it D, 
uh, decrease significant uh, significant decrease uh, compared to pre-COVID levels, uh, um, uh, for example, because of paradigm shift in travel, uh, because of digitalization, etc. So, if uh, the audience can uh, uh, respond, uh, please, uh, and uh, uh, while while they respond, David, if you could uh, introduce uh, Kurt. Yeah. Okay. So we wait for the for the response. Uh, so so Kurt is uh, head of the high speed and long distance services at the at the Austrian Federal Railways. Uh, in particular, uh, we have seen how he and his team have worked very hard to bring back, especially long distance and overnight travel on the Austrian Railway back on steam. And I think uh, this is something that we can all learn from. Uh, I mean, I at least I on my part, I'm particularly looking forward to Kurt's uh, presentation on this. Uh, having run overnight, uh, you know, almost uh, continental distances over the large country of India and uh, see what learnings uh, we, we can bring on. Uh, when, uh, when do we have the results? So they are here. Yes. Um, so if the um, uh, many of the audience have responded, um, so if you could make the last uh, uh, a choice, if you haven't yet. Um, so um, if you can decide in the next five seconds. Um, uh, if you haven't voted yet, um, three seconds, um, and they will close the poll now. So if um, if we can close the poll, please, um, and then uh, the results you can see in the poll section and the closed um, uh, tab. Um, so, yeah, the biggest number, 39% uh, uh, of the audience think increase uh, compared to pre-COVID levels. So... Uh, Fairly optimistic um, uh, audience, I think, Tavinde. Yes, I should think so. And I think, uh, considering the fact they're all field professionals and uh, hands-on, uh, I think that's a very optimistic way to start. And uh, Kurt, let's 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 listen into you about your experience and how this optimism is being sustained by your excellent work on the Austrian railways. Over to you, Kurt.
Um, Ka Ka but I'm, I'm sorry to, to interrupt um, um, the audience uh, telling us, I, I can hear you perfectly, but the audience are uh, indicating that they cannot hear um, uh, your voice. Um, so um, I don't know what, uh, um, what the issue is. I can, I can hear you, so it's not your, your um, technical problem at your side. Um, uh, we will um, uh, find out, um, I think uh, looking at the audience uh, messages, um, I understand that I think they could hear me and Davinde, um, and uh, um, but it seems like uh, there's a technical issue. Um, so um, um, if we can do just one thing, um, if you can try to um, refresh your browser, maybe this this sometimes does the does the job. Um, and if it doesn't work, um, we'll um, we'll ask the next presenter to start first, and then then we'll we'll try to sort out your your uh, your mic uh, your audio uh, issue on, on the on the platform uh, while the second speaker is speaking. I'm, I'm sorry about that. There's some some uh, technical issue, not not your not your fault. Uh, some technical issue on the on the platform. Um, so um, let's try and see if we can uh, um, uh, refresh uh, your browser and see if that works. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Um, if the members of the audience, if you can uh, um, indicate whether you can hear uh, me and Kurt uh, on the chat screen. I, I hear you, Jules. Uh, you can hear. Okay, perfect. Everyone can but hear. I, um, but, uh, I could, but I could hear before too. Okay, perfect. Okay, so thank you, audience members. You, you're indicating that you can hear us. Um, Kurt, I, I, I suggest if you can maybe start from the beginning. I, I'm sorry about that. Uh, there's some, some issues. Um, but now now let's start again so the audience can hear. We'll, 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 we'll start your 10 minute clock once again. But are you sure that, okay, audience, can you hear me now? That is the question. They, they, um, they are indicating okay. in the chat okay. that they can now hear you. Great. I'm, I'm um, sorry, everyone, about this uh, in, in, in interruption. Now, now, but thank you, thank you for pointing out that you cannot hear uh, Kurt. So now, now it's working. So Excellent. Let's, let's again. Yeah, good, good. So let's push back into the station and start again. Yes, let's go back. Uh, um, okay, let's restart. And I probably might, I, I will probably even get to the point more quickly. So. The first message I had is, and this is slide number two, is the rolling stock. Um, what we as a railway operator have as the main asset, which has the most value, is rolling stock. Uh, and it has two problems, rolling stock, in uncertain times. It is there, it still depreciates financially, and still it causes capital costs, or it has capital costs on it. So there's not really much you can do about this side of the resources. The second thing you have is staff. And staff actually, um, during the pandemic, uh, we were thinking about two major things. One was reducing the number of staff on duty in order to have a backlog of staff if uh, people or groups of people should get ill. Because the biggest risk we have seen is that we have to stop our business because we don't have staff who's able to run the trains. Um, and the second thing, we were in the lucky situation that in Austria there was a program by the state. So we could uh, let some people into uh, state aid for a certain period of time uh, where their salary, 90% of the salary actually was uh, paid by the state. So this really was a financial optimization on that uh, perspective. But if you take all together as a long distance operator, um, there is... You can do a little bit here or a little bit there, but it's never significant. If you really want to make significant um, savings on your resources, you have to change the timetable. Uh, and you really have to change it significantly. Otherwise, it will not help. And in Europe, timetable process takes typically six to 12 months. So in this uncertainty, we really had to act um, in an unknown field, because what we typically do, and I will go now on the next slide, what we 
are typically confronted with is uncertain times on a part of the network in a locally um, uh, in a local area where the rest of the system keeps running and for example there's a line closure and for that we have programs where we optimize then our resources in terms of the rolling stock uh, the uh, the um, uh, staff, employees, etc. We have a good information for our customers and we know exactly um, uh, how to take care of that. Suddenly the entire system broke down. There was basically no demand and we really had to act more deeply and we created a totally new timetable um, and in that way we were able to um, save resources. However, this is not as easy as it sounds because we are a small country with a lot of international trains. So if you do that, you really have to communicate with your neighboring railways because the train is not only in within your system, the train might also serve some purposes in the foreign country. So um, shutting or reducing the timetable required an awful lot of interaction and negotiations with uh partner railways, which on their own, again, had their own problems. And this had to happen uh, very quickly. And I must say, we learned quite a lot of it. And um, I was going through the title of this presentation again, and uncertain times. I had to learn for myself. I now have to differentiate between three, three types of uncertain times. There's the short-term uncertainty, like a line closure. And I think there we've got software to help us, and we've got experience. Then we've got uncertain times which are long lasting, like the COVID pandemic, and it will last till it's over, till there is vaccination or whatever. And then we've got the very long lasting effects, like if we do not invest in infrastructure right now because of COVID, this will have an effect over the next 10, 20, 30 years. Um, and the same is true with the paradigm shift. So if uh, people simply travel less because of digitalization, this really makes a difference for the rail operators. And I was going into the poll uh, results quickly at the beginning, and I will do that again. It's very unusual that the poll um, doesn't give a clear answer because most of you were quite optimistic, but the second highest number was already the very pessimistic uh, view if you look into the transport demand for the future. So really nobody at the moment knows what is the right thing. The next message, or the, what, what is the future and what will come? The next message I want to send to you as a state operator is if you look into resource management and optimization, you cannot only look from a technical or financial perspective. There's always the political dimension and the social, social dimension as well. And I will give you, give you two examples of what I mean. What we did is, because of decreasing demand, we shortened trains. And the first ma message we got from the public it was, are you crazy? You know that social distancing is so important. And the first thing you do is making trains shorter. For us, that was a normal reaction because there was not much demand. But from a society point of view, this is totally unlogical what we did. And I can understand it. And there's the political dimension, where politicians obviously want a, a sound and stable public transport because that's the base of our economy and a lot of people really depend on those services. So if you start optimizing rail resources, the political dimension is at least as important. And in Austria, I think we've got a good example where the state, during the very hard times, gave state aid to private and state operators in order to keep the business running because we had a loss of passengers of about 90% during the COVID times. And as a rational rail operator, we should have stopped the rail services completely because financially disastrous. So pol policymakers um, uh, were able to find a way to actually support not only the state railways, but also the private operators in order to keep the rail business running. And I think that's a good lessons learned in these very difficult times. Um, and um, I'm not sure about my time now. Could somebody tell me how much minutes I've got left? I don't want 
to stress your yes, time too yes, much. About three more, two, two to three more minutes. Left. Oh, excellent. Um, then another point, um, and I will show you the slides why this is so important. Um, let's go to the future picture immediately. You can see that we have in Austria a very integrated timetable where you have timetable patterns, which really uh, each train depends on each other in the nodes. And taking out one train might have much more effect than only on this particular train service because some trains, which are feeders, for example, then don't have to feed anything into. So there is in a world where we live in Austria, not a little bit timetable optimization, as I was saying, there's only all or nothing. Either you plan everything new or you run the system like it is or you stop it completely. But there is not a little bit. And then there are, is one specific train operation pattern, which is the night train. A night train uh, only operates once a night. So there's always only zero or one. There is nothing in between. Those are things which really sometimes restrict your ability to do optimiza optimization of rail resources. Um, and um, to conclude with, what we at the moment see is that during summer, actually passengers came back and we had about 60 to 70 percent of patronage compared to pre-COVID times. But we can already see now uh, from the passenger numbers that Europe is basically going into the next lockdown because in the last few weeks, passenger numbers dropped dramatically, especially on international services, but also on national services. And so it is now really the time to again think about is it necessary to have a reduced overall timetable in order to save resources and uh, uh, save costs? But this, at the end of the day, is more a political question than a pure financial question of the rail operators. And that's what I want to conclude with. Um, we are not an industry, I suppose, where we can only look on the resource optimization and financial implications during such heavy times but we also have to take into account what society and what political decision makers want and need. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Kurt. I think that that was a very short, uh, short uh, presentation. And uh, I think you, uh, you raised the right issue that rail is much more than, uh, you know, just finance and just our internal way of looking at systems, but actually is the interfaces uh, with broad society uh, and the political and social aspects that that remain really important uh, clearly for of course austria and europe uh, but you know imagine uh, in asia and, and across africa and, and the lands where you know railway is really the, the national arteries and and the lifelines of the country thank you so much thank uh, you jules can i hand it back to you for the second poll Yes, thank you, David, and thank you, Kurt, um, uh, for your presentation. Um, we have a second poll um, uh, coming up. Uh, it will show on your screen shortly. Um, so how long did it take your organization to switch to remote work from home? So um, uh, after the, due to the pandemic, how long did it take your, um, uh, did, uh, for your organization to switch to uh, working from home? Uh, is it one day, one week, one month? Uh, or more than one month or still not done, everyone's working uh, in the office. Um, so if you could uh, provide this uh, response. Um, and in the meantime, Davinde, uh, if you'd like to introduce the next speaker, Luke um, Mahozo. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, hey. Uh, so our next speaker is uh, Lukman Puzzle. And uh, Lukman is the Chief Information Officer and the Chief uh, Digital Officer for New Jersey Transit. Uh, we all know New Jersey, and we all know the the the, the heavy operation and, and the number of passengers and the criticality of uh, this particular transit line uh, serving an international airport or whole county connecting with New York. So uh, this is a a rather heavy responsibility, and I think uh, we are all grateful to Lakman for finding time to brief us on what they are doing at NJ to to deal with the, the pandemic and the post-pandemic applications. Uh, so before Rukman comes in, 
Uh, yeah. uh, Jules, have you completed the poll? So yes, um, most of you have uh, responded to the poll. Um, if you haven't yet, if you can respond in the next five seconds and then we'll be closing the poll. Um, so yes, if we can close the poll, please. And, and the result you can see in the poll section once again under closed tab. Um, so um, yeah, uh, majority have responded uh, one day or one week. Davinde and Lukman. Yeah, one day is a fabulous response. And I mean, it would be great to share uh, you know, the one day response clearly that's that's well conditioned yeah but around one week uh, is, is of course a longer time for any transit to come in but i think we will uh, discuss these questions uh, later after the presentations uh, so lukman uh, please take over great thank you Devinder and Jules, uh, for giving us me the opportunity to represent new jersey transit before i move too much into the slides lukman, i just want to make sure that the audience Yes, I can hear you and I'm talking. Can you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Lukman. Um, uh, Davinde, I don't know if you... Um... No, I, I cannot hear him. Uh, I, I hope okay. the audience can. I hear also perfectly fine. Uh, let's just yes. double check with yeah. the audience. If, if the audience members can um, uh, confirm whether you can hear uh, Lukman. Okay, so you can hear Lukman. And Davinde, I, I, I suggest if you can um, uh, refresh your browser. I, I'm, I'm sorry about this uh, um, situation. Um, okay, so um, Lukman, over to you. Uh, the audience can hear you. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, so thank you guys for, for, uh, for this opportunity. Um, you know, New Jersey Transit is the third largest uh, transit agency, at least in the U.S., um, we transport, a, you know, this is pre-COVID numbers, we transport a million people a day uh, and in all modes of transportation, heavy, heavy rail, light rail, bus, and paratransit. So I uh, wanted to, uh, you know, basically uh, share a different approach uh, compared to what was shared earlier. Um, so uh, if you are, you know, I'm, I'm taking over the slides. So just to give you some background, uh, you know, all transit agencies are yeah, considered essential services. Uh, we must keep them going. Um, and because we have to keep them going, uh, of course, the, uh, you know, we are tracking our COVID numbers as well. So we are a 12,000 employee organization, 592 have test, were tested positive. Unfortunately, we, lo we lost 13 people to the pandemic. Uh, and, you know, we are tracking the number of employees. Uh, you know, with with this uh, uh, you know disease, and then uh, uh, and then the ridership numbers. So our ridership, you know, uh, have uh, we see a, see a, a rise in ridership uh, so far. So rail has come back to a 20, 20, 20 to twenty five percent, bus about fifty percent, and light rail uh, about fifty five percent. Now we are seeing uh, a second wave in New Jersey. And, and and also other states uh and what's happening there is uh you know newer new warnings are coming out uh, the the rise is increasing and uh you know so we uh we are uh, uh watching those numbers carefully uh and see how that co is going to continue impacting us um all right slide 3 uh we had uh, took several safety measures um, just like everybody else in the world, uh, where we started uh, enhancing uh, the frequency, increasing the frequency of our cleaning, uh, providing PPE uh, um, you know, equipment. Um, the governor signed uh, two executive order, you know, 125 and 165, uh, with special instructions on you know, face covering on uh, uh, transit. And also we have start, you know, we, we put in vending machines to purchase these PPE for our riders, you know, uh, and also looking at the ultraviolet study, you know, so that there's self-cleaning happening in, a, in uh, on, on, on all of these modes. Uh, so um, the, our fare box, 
you know, we, we collect about over a billion dollars just in fair box revenue. These are all the ticket sales. We did get a $1.4 billion funding from the federal government under the CARES Act and also have requested another 1.2 additional funding uh, uh, from them. Uh, collab this is not possible without the collaboration of several agencies, which all face similar problems. But you know we are mass transit. The mass is is the is is the uh, you know is, is very hard to remove the mass from mass transit. So you know if one you know before COVID we were uh, we were all about you know bring people in the mass transit because that means less cars on the street, which means less uh, pollution, which means less accident. Uh, you know, mass transit is the largest uh, ride sharing service, if you, if you, if you, you know, can say that, um, because we, uh, you know, one, one more, one, one, uh, one, uh, one transit or one rail, uh, you know, uh, prevents, you know, a thousand cars from being on the street, for example. Um, so, so we've been partnering with uh, several um, agencies and doing this whole cross-agency collaboration, uh, and which has has helped. Now this is you know just a slide. You don't have to read through the content, but knowing that uh, the ridership has been uh, significantly impacted, now you know what are what are we going to do to bring back that trust, the safety, the security, the comfort. You know, of our, of the riders to to uh, get back uh, to so that they can take the transit. And the key thing there is, it has to have a huge technology transformation, innovation component to do that. Um, so uh, you know, it's no longer the case that uh, you know, let's do it the old way. We have always been doing this way. We have always ran our schedules this way. You know, so that way is not going to work because the you know and the way to transform an organization is through use of technology and through use of innovation so one of the one of the missing piece for transit and transportation industries was you know you, you know if you had to find out you know what's the best company uh, uh to you know to which is the for example which is the best web conferencing company you know, our web, web, best web conferencing tool that I need to uh, use. There are several companies which produce a research report like Gartner and Forrester and IDC. They will give you a nice comparison chart, you know, uh, and tell you all the all the companies we need to talk to, and they'll give you the comparison, you know, talk to Teams, Microsoft Teams, and Zoom, and, and GoToMeeting, and all of those, and uh, with the strengths and weaknesses. Nothing like that existed up until now, and we created this is a list of technology companies which solely exist to solve a transit specific problem, so very focused on transit. so we created that you know just like Gartner has their magic quadrant and Forrester have has their Forrester wave uh, you know a circle uh, we created a transit innovation matrix. Uh, and we uh, so that uh, that what that does is it it brings it brings uh, it helps the business to bring challenges their challenges which they face on a daily basis. We add that into our tracker, and then the the process works is once you identify a challenge that you want to solve, we now have a database of transit specific technology companies which exist solely to solve transit problems, and that database is continuously growing. Um, the reason being is, you know, we and and the, and that work needs to always continue because you know we may have scored a company, we may have selected a finalist, um, you know, but you know things change. Uh, companies, a, new companies always enter, old companies exit, exit, existing companies may purchase or buy other companies, and they all start offering a new capability which they didn't offer yesterday. So what we have done is we have created a process where we can do this intake of these new companies into the uh, into this uh, innovation matrix, score them, uh, and select the finalists. Then do a you know uh, the then get to know more about their products by doing the demos, uh, understanding you know doing a proof of concept, and then if we like what we see, then move it to the production. So 
So what we'd like to see is in this chart, we'd like to see a blue color across all those six columns and not red or yellow colors, uh, which, would, which means that uh, we were not able to solve the business challenge. Uh, so an example of the first one is, uh, and I won't go through all of them, uh, but an example of the first one, the business came to us and said, you know, we need to figure out a way on how we can um, give a capacity and, you know, a crowding level of our trains uh, to our uh, to our customers. So before they board a train, they want to make sure that it's it's uh, less occupied. You know, it's a green train and not an overcrowded red color train. You know, it's a business challenge. Uh, we took that challenge. We evaluated several companies. Uh, who offered a product and a solution in that area. And then we moved forward to developing a solution. Uh, and now if you look at our mobile app, you will see a red, yellow, green color for both our rails and our buses, you know, uh, to, to, uh, to gain ridership confidence. Uh, you know, we are looking at innovation, you know, other things, uh, other things to present. For example, one of the challenges came to us is, you know, can you, can you also let our riders know that when was the train last cleaned? You know, so the the latest cleaning, you know, if the train was last cleaned recently, well, that's going to increase the ridership confidence. So these are the kinds of things that we are trying to do. Another business challenge that came to us uh, through this was, you know, we need to bring our employees back. And how do we make sure that they are COVID free? So we evaluated several solutions in that, uh, you know, a simple uh, solution where you would click a button and self-certify yourself that you're COVID free, you know, that I didn't go outside New Jersey, I didn't come in contact with, uh, you know, three questions that we ask, uh, and you submit, and, and we evaluated, you know, on the other extreme companies which were providing IoT sensors, which would scan you, check your thermal temperature, and if you were clean, it would open up the gate and allow you inside the building and everything in between. So we did that, looked at the technology uh, and implemented the solution. Uh, that's uh, somewhere in here, that number three. Uh, it, it's right now in going to go into production. Once now, the, a, a, once a decision is made that we need to return, all of employees need to return back to work, well, we have the solution ready for them. So innovation is is key um, uh, to to uh, uh, to drive uh, uh, this returning of ridership numbers back. You know, so you need to need to uh, provide uh, a comfort level to the riders that the train you're about to take is a COVID-free train, basically. You know, and how do you say that? How do you give that? You you give that. Uh, you 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 provide that information by showing the riders the capacity, you're showing the riders when it was last cleaned, showing the riders, you know, the uh, on-time arrival, where to stand on the on the station, so that which car they need to enter. All of those are, uh, you know, in line uh, with gaining the ridership confidence and trust. So many, you know, so we have a big program under, under uh, you know, resource uh, optimization and bringing ridership and employees back under our touchless and contactless initiative. So, you know, nobody wants to touch anybody these days. Uh, you know, our old, old method of, in our train was you show your paper ticket or you show your mobile ticket. The conductor looks at it. He takes the ticket and punches it with, uh, with their own, uh, you know, uh, uh, paper and it inserts it in front of your seat so that the conductor then knows what your destination stop is. Uh, that was a that was a touch point. We wanted to eliminate that touch point. There were several uh, things that were not on the on, on our digital platform. So before COVID, our light rail ticketing was never digital. It was always paper. Uh, our um, uh, you know our um, uh, the uh, uh, student ticketing, which is, you know, universities, which we deal with and we provide student discounts. They were never on, uh, never digital. They were on paper, you know, and, and, and this is, the, fortunately, uh, th th this work started before COVID, which is why we were ready to do it, because it just made sense. Uh, uh, similarly, many, many things we started to do. So I joined New Jersey Transit in March of last year. And the 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 technology uh, provided to me 
at that time, you know, uh, was a wired desktop, a wired phone, uh, you know, uh, uh, you had to come into the building to punch your, uh, you know, card, you know, and this is not a specific to New Jersey Transit. This is, you know, just a public sector being in the public sector, sector and you're part of a state or federal agencies. They want you to come in. They want you to sit in the room. They want you to collaborate. So there was nothing like, uh, uh, you know, a, a web conference solution or, or work from home concept. Uh, you know, we, because fortunate that we started this work of eliminating all of this last year. So when COVID hit in, in February and March, when we decided to switch over, uh, you know, we were we switched over within a week um, and, and made and went remote. Uh, you know, so this is uh, not because we, we knew COVID was going to hit, but these things made sense. And um, you know, I used to get a um, you know a, a laptop where I could take a laptop home. 20 years ago, you know, why should I have to carry, you know, why should I have to come into the building and, and use a desktop with a, a wired desktop? Just didn't make sense. So many, many initiatives. So uh, another big initiative to move away from touching each other, you know, is that we are giving out um, scanners to our conductors. These scanners basically will be helping uh, these scanners will be basically given to them so they, they, that when the riders present their paper or digital ticket, uh, now they don't have to touch. They just scan you from far um, and, again, moving you more closer to uh, being a digital organization. Um, so this is, uh, this is another big initiative happening. Uh, we are almost halfway done. Uh, we have about 1,500 conductors. Uh, on our 1,200 cars, um, and so that's the scope of this project. Um, another uh, another touchless initiative is on the uh, on the um, uh, on the light rail, uh, where we uh, where we are moving light rail uh, onto our digital platform, uh, and uh, a, a, a part of that is also um, you know looking at our buses you know this one is not a bus but same problem exists on the bus side where we are putting in these um, scan uh, touchless scanners so you don't have to put it insert a coin we will give you a prepaid card you can tap and go you don't have to even swipe your credit card you know with no technologies on the credit card where you can just just, just do a touch you know, those technologies, uh, you know, um, is, is what we are deploying. Another big project which is related to, you know, technology or innovation improvement is is our, our ticket vending machines. You know, if you want to go all digital, you know, vending machines are all there to, to give you paper tickets. We have about 550 ticket vending machines. We are looking at upgrading those, uh, replacing them, Reducing them where possible because, and we are measuring the number of number of paper customers have which have now gone mobile and digital, uh, and we want to give some kind of an incentive to people who are moving away from paper and moving on to digital. So, looking at several initiatives there on how do we encourage people from going uh, paperless. So it's all under the paperless umbrella. Um, so that's another big initiative. And then the last one is the uh, public announcement system. So these are all the speakers at the train stations uh, where sometimes, you know, because of the older uh, speaker systems, uh, the audio quality is not very good. Uh, we are upgrading all of that with better uh, quality speaker systems so that, you know, again, to uh, make better announcements, clear announcements, uh, so that the voice is not muffled, like you know, as if you're talking under under the water. Um, so th these, uh, so big, big, uh, big push there. And then you know, we on the mobile app, you know, we are trying. We we have started deploying this departure vision 4.0. This is a this is an application that's part of your mobile app as well as on the website that gives you information on your train arrival and when it's arriving. So right now we have a you know uh, the accuracy of your train arrival is not exactly to the to the you know uh, it has a big er big big error rate uh, because of the way the technology was deployed you know and that's what was available in the past now we have GPSs on the trains you know we are looking at 
GPS, which is a be- more accurate technology, so that you as a rider don't have to, you know, even if I'm giving you a plus m- minus three minutes or seven minutes, you are now waiting on a station, uh, you know, that those extra seven minutes. If I were to give you in plus minus 30 seconds or plus minus one minute, now I'm reducing the crowding at the station because now nobody has to wait there for that long. You know, because in seven minutes, we could have had two trains pass by. Um, so we just want to have the right number of people standing at the station for the right train, not not uh, for multiple trains. Uh, so that's an example. But that's all possible, possible uh, you know, to data is what's going to be a key here. You know, so we are we have made heavy investment in our data analytics, our BI. Uh, we have hired the first time we hired a data scientist uh, because you know in uh, data you know gathering data from application and putting it together and showing you a, a picture, you know that's all you know um, past. What we are now trying to do is we are trying to move ahead and we are trying to predict and uh, predict failures and predict issues and predict uh, you know um uh, uh these uh, you know these events so that we can then go on to the next step of prescribing a solution and prescribing a remedy for it so huge push you know in the, in the, in the, in the, in the data here is an example of we are looking at our ticket sales the paper ticket sales using our you know ticket vending machines and uh, ticket uh, office machines um, and looking at the trends on how things are moving and where they are moving um, that helps us decide which which office to keep open versus closed um, we are also working with multiple departments within the new jersey transit to build a centralized warehouse you know so we have about 140 applications all applications have some kind of a data behind it we are aggregating all of that uh, for a one common view so that we can make business decisions using this data. Uh, here is an example of our on-time performance. So, you know, historically we track, you know, how late or how on time your train was. Now we are with our, with our, with our data scientist work, we are now moving it to a, you know, predicting which train do we anticipate will be late in the future. You know, so this is, uh, you know, the next level. All right, so this is the last slide. So this is some of the campaigns from a safety and security perspective that we are running for New Jersey Transit. Um, you'll see these stickers everywhere, mask safe NJ, walk safe, sit safe, um, to remind people on how serious we are about ridership safety. That concludes my presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lukman. Uh, I think it was some of the work that you are doing there uh, is really cutting edge especially in terms of uh, the data science and, and the BI parts. Uh, we will uh, talk more about this in, in the, in when we discuss between ourselves uh, and take questions from the audience. So Jules, can I get back to you for the third poll? Um, so that uh, um, we don't have any more polls there uh, today, uh, Davinde. So we can move on directly to the uh, uh, next uh, uh, speaker, Eric. Um, can I um, use this opportunity, though, to remind the audience that uh, if you're uh, um, interested in uh, um, downloading uh, the, hand, um, the the slides, uh, they, they are available in the handout section. Um, and also, um, uh, if you have any questions to the speakers, do uh, uh, share your questions on, in the Q&A uh, section of the, uh, the panel. Um, uh, we have a few few people who've already asked questions. You can also vote uh, which questions you want to be asked. You want Davinda to pick up um, uh, in the panel discussion. So, uh, if you like any of the questions, do do vote uh, 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 those questions uh, through. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, just just a quick reminder about how how you can ask questions and and how you can uh, download your your um, uh, uh, the, the slides of these uh, few speakers. Thank you, Davinda. Okay, so I think uh, after uh, Lukman's uh, exhibition of interventions that have come on NJ Transit, I think it's the right time for Eric to come in. Uh, Eric is a sales director for Europe, Canada, and USA for Gold Systems. And uh, uh, Gold Systems uh, is bringing in expertise in optimizing rail resource management. Uh, so over to you, Eric. You're all ears.
Jules, can you hear me? Just to confirm. Yes, I can hear you. Um, I want to make sure Eric uh, is available. Um, 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 Eric, if you can hear me, um, you can. Uh, um, we cannot hear you, so um, uh, the best thing is if you can uh, refresh your browser. And if it doesn't work, I, I suggest we go into the discussion until Eric is available, and then we can continue with his presentation. Um, but if you, Eric, if you can uh, um, refresh your browser and see if you can uh, uh, switch on your camera. Ah, there he is. Hello, do you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. And you can see me, maybe? Yes, I can see you. OK, perfect. OK, thank you very much uh, to all of you to participate uh, to this uh, um, uh, webinar. Um, I, I was I just wanted to start by, by a sad comment about your presentation, Bookman. Um, I saw that uh, on your innovation tracker, you have been testing uh, of my competitors and not us. I hope we will have a, a chance uh, to, to, to speak again, as uh, we have already spoke uh, several years ago and do some POC, but, uh, but maybe it was uh, too early for you to, 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 to change your solution. And um, so, uh, so I hope uh, we will have a chance to speak again. Okay. So uh, I would like to give you uh, some ideas about um, about uh, these certain times uh, we are living and how they are affecting the transit uh, business. Um, I I'm, I wanted to to start by. Um, uh, short uh, presentation about uh, goal system for those who, who don't know about our company. Um, we, we are a software editor born in 1992 with a, a global presence with uh, in over 30 countries uh, with offices in, in six countries. Uh, and 95% of our revenue comes from out of Spain, Spain being in our headquarters. So thanks God, uh, we, we are not, uh, one of those companies suffering the most of the COVID. Uh, our, as our market, it's, it's global. Uh, and we have today uh, and services in uh, eight languages. Okay. Um, and, uh, interesting to say, um, we cover all passenger transportation modes, uh, both urban and long distance. Uh, we serve bus, train, commuters, tramways, metros, also ferries and airplanes uh, and what to do, they do what do we do for them uh, we we cover the full spectrum of of the planning from the optimal creation of uh, timetables uh, the optimal vehicle scheduling optimal driver scheduling optimal driver and and vehicle um, allocation daily replanning and resources dispatch and control. I don't know. I don't know if you are seeing me. Uh, okay. Um, and I wanted to to share with you this uh, slide. Uh, obviously, there is no name on this slide, but I think it's it's interesting about the powerful uh, results that um, this kind of uh, software can bring to the clients okay we you can see some uh, quite amazing uh, numbers uh, for example nine percent in in fleet saving 
y nos tenía eh, eh, 23% en productive kilometer savings en una bus company, eh, 9.6% overtime savings en una bus company too, en eh, in, in Southeast Asia, savings on fleets ranging from 4% to 17% eh, in, in Latin America, um, uh, duty savings uh, ranging with a minimum of 3% uh, in Europe, uh, uh, even in, um, in, in the industry that most interests you, like, like railways uh, business, Uh, we, we could get uh, impressive results, uh, for example, helping a company to do the sizing of the locomotives they were going to need for the new uh, high-speed services they were going to launch, where we saved uh, 2.4% uh, 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 um, of, of the locomotives they were going to buy. Uh, remember that uh, the cost is uh, over 20 million euros. So we are speaking about a lot of money, uh, but we are also speaking about duty saving. Um, so, so um, impressive results if you compare them with uh, the cost uh, of um, of building um, train companies, uh, especially. Okay, so um, uh, this is uh, optimization results uh, we got. Were uh, very different, obviously, depending on the sectors and the countries, uh, depending on, on the cultural backgrounds and, and the labor regulations. But uh, uh, to just to list uh, some of these uh, paths uh, of optimization. Uh, being able to explore and, and uh, uh, increase productivity on, uh, obviously uh, ranging from uh, and human resources needed for the operation, uh, reducing dead end or non-commercial uh, trips, uh, helping to uh, Helping, helping to look for the best localization of the infrastructure, We're speaking about depots or workshops, uh, adapting the, to, to the demand and peak and valley uh, management. Um, obviously, quality and qualitative results also around robustness and punctuality for improving the customer experience helping on the sizing of the resources previous to the creation or extension of the network, handling very complex network configuration, uh, for example, uh, networks with sharing one single track. Uh, and this, this happens mostly on, on, on tramways, uh, where um, one single track has to be shared among several lines. And, and this is one of the most uh, complex uh, uh, constraints uh, to handle for improving uh, and increasing uh, the transit uh, network. network. Um, helping on the maintenance and workshop planning, uh, and both uh, uh, in improving uh, the maintenance into the planning Uh, in an optimal way, but also uh, relying uh, um, the maintenance plan and the workshop capacity and abilities in order to, to, to make, uh, to take the best decision and, and the cheapest decision. Um, uh, handling extra hours and obviously uh, respecting 100% of the CBAs etc. Uh, um, many, many, uh, many paths uh, can be explored uh, and, and this is our specialty uh, while helping our clients. Okay. So 
um, optimization to get where we are today has been uh, uh, um, uh, which started from in-company solutions. Uh, um, let me uh, uh, speak a, a little bit about this because I think it's interesting uh, and it's concerning still a lot of companies. For, for decades, uh, scheduling and rostering have been processes managed strictly by internal experts with a bit of human capacity and a scarce computational help. The rest in sizing and allocation resources were sometimes qualified as art. And it is true that some plan planners were able to manage with only the help of a pen and a, a sheet of paper or a wall with magnets presentation of the network, the lines, depots, garage, vehicles, drivers, uh, and even all the incidents. But this obliged the scheduling teams to develop tools to help them on the decision process, where the limited train paths were the main constraint. Solutions were very specific of each operation, with um, limited financial means, limited of knowledge or, te or technology and limited data availability. It was the era of organization, more than the era of optimization. But even talking about resource optimization, especially of human resources, it was a kind of taboo. The company was compared with its competitor or colleagues based on the side, on the size. The bigger, the better rather than on efficiency or quality of service. For a long time, this taboo towards optimization concepts prevailed, especially in public companies, uh, which were uh, trade unions were extremely powerful, which means most of them. Okay. Um, so, uh, Sorry. So uh, the, the following uh, step was to, to look for a specialized out of the shelf editor solution. Okay. Optimization uh, of resources in the rail sector has become today a critical topic to a COVID pandemic. Uh, yeah. when, the, uh, when the world population, the government and the public authorities have discovered the need for social and suffered the consequences and suffered the consequences of being unprepared for extremely heavy and fast changes on the transportation demand. COVID is acting as an extreme accelerator on a market already existing trend. Um, a few decades ago, some pioneers decided to look for external providers' ability to build software solutions for using the optimization concept into their operation. At the beginning, the challenge was all around rolling stock. Remember the taboo about human resources I was speaking before were impressive, both on the, siding, on the sizing of the new fleets and extension of existing networks and the overall operation. The experience of those operators in, in, in bus and trains and another transportation mode opened a path for other players who finally accepted to trust that the specialized software ed editors were able to understand 100% of their business and operational constraints at the same time, we're able to bring software technology and algorithms and calculation capacity they lack it internally. These editors brought all together knowledge and best practices of other operators to the rail sector. But they brought also experience from other transportation modes, like the bidding from the airline industry, as well as other technologies, new for development capacity, expert with scientific skills like uh, mathematics, physics, statistics, computer sciences. And the result has been the development of advanced planning and optimization tool, 
able to manage on an optimal way resources, timetables, network, and maintenance. But uh, let's not forget when speaking about resource optimization and changing times that we are living another change, a social change with major impact in our companies. Um, at the same time, a high constraint due to the retirement of a large number of drivers, the difficulty to attract employees to these kind of jobs. For example, Norway is looking for 5,000 bus drivers. UK, Netherlands, France are looking for several thousands too. It's amazing when you open the website of a US operator, it often includes, includes on the first page hiring proposals. And affecting the sector uh, and uh, is even getting worse by the fierce competition between operators to recruit qualified staff, even in the railway sector, by the increasing liberalization of the market and the emergence of new operators. Um, Dutch Bahn, SNCF, Remfe, ILSA, all of them are recruiting engineers in Spain at this moment. As an example, but um, another phenomenon pointing to the social changes which are affecting the young generations. We are more interested in reconciling personal and professional life, favoring leisure and friends, looking for individual rather than collective needs, uh, interested uh, by their families and with fewer children. It is more crucial than ever for planning to take into account the requests and preferences of employees when organizing their work and resting time. Now, the human resource was defined by the rules and constraints relating to collective bargaining agreements, company policies toward labor and union strength. But talking, talking today about optimization of human resources, uh, uh, was was um, talking about optimization of human resources were badly perceived by society. Was dressed up in euphemism such as standardization, regularization, early retirement. Now, the scarcity in staffing resources and the social demands of the new employees make retaining them a major issue. This, taking, taking into account their demands and preferences, for example, about their preferred shift, when they take leaves, if they are volunteer or not for extra hours, the ability to swap duty or rest has become a must. Preferably, preferably through staff portal with a web or an app access where the planners and dispatchers can choose what can be accepted automatically and what needs manager approval, but based on equity and fairness. This kind of solution, where giving employees power to organize their timetables, can perfectly be implemented without degrading the quality and the cost of the solution. On the contrary, on our experience, uh, social satisfaction is coupled with improved productivity. Our clients have gained better punctuality, less presentation, better distribution between peak and off peak. For, for example, drivers preferring to leave on Wednesday and Thursday rather than on the weekends because they are divorced and need to take care of their children or they want to go hunting or whatever. If we add to this an engine that links uh, performance to preferences, where driving request depends on objective KPIs, that measure the quality of the task, for example, and if this engine is considered fair by the employees themselves, the company can regain some capacity over the employees that until now was more, more lost uh, than, than gain when the train or the bus started. This kind of solution can be deployed to all the staff, not only the drivers. We started this solution for a main rail operator 
who wanted to test if there was room for improving safe labor conditions based on individual demands. For the record, on a very small population of 35 employee residents, we were able to accept 80% of their demand for leaves, far from the 30 something they were obtaining manually. Um, some, some clues about our solution. Uh, Goldrain seeks the solutions with the expert criteria of human planners of the sector. So the, the, the first input for us is how planners do to, to get optimal solutions, okay? And uh, with our objective functions uh, to answer all the criteria that make a programming to be put into operation in the company, we, we can get fantastic results. Um, for, the, for the business, uh, those rules are what is uh, allowed or prohibited, which solution is best, which function is the best, which has the lowest cost, and which contribute more to the social peace. We, we use um, algorithms uh, based on uh, constraint uh, management and heuristics to search for uh, improved solution. And as you can see on the graph, uh, one, each one of the colors represent uh, one kind of, uh, uh, in, of uh, objective function uh, uh, targets uh, and how they decrease on time. Okay. I wanted to speak about uh, one example, and this example is based on a BRT uh, company in Mexico. Uh, I didn't want to take uh, a train uh, example uh, to avoid any susceptibility from any, any client, okay? Um, what, um, so this, this example is, uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, this example shows uh, what were the traditional main objectives of our tool. Uh, they were reducing empty kilometers, re reducing uh, emissions, try to, to perfectly fit uh, uh, demand and offer, minimize the number of vehicles and drivers, and make simulations. With uh, the arrival of the COVID, uh, this uh, operator, which which had 61 vehicles into production, uh, which was composed of 15 operating companies using five kind of uh, vehicles, uh, uh, riding 53 million kilometers per year, with seven lines and 22 uh, routes. Uh, and eight uh, schedulers. We we're doing an average of 90 scheduling simulations per month. Okay. Uh, what happened during the COVID? Uh, they reduced the number of vehicles to 250. Uh, uh, all, uh, all this reduction is split among the 15 uh, operators in a fair way. Uh, they keep using the five kind of vehicles they had. They reduced 55% the total number of kilometers. They reduced the number of routes from 22 to 13. The number of experts using the tool uh, keep the same. Uh, but the number of uh, simulations and, and programming rising until uh, up to 170. Okay. So, uh, translating it into their operation. Uh, as you see, the graph shows the, the behavior of the demand, the kilometers and passenger kilometer index, which represent a, a, obviously a downward trend with a staggered tendency uh, as at the beginning of the pandemic. 
Therefore, adjustments have been gradually made uh, within goal tool week after week. We see that in March 23rd, they already they reached a 15% reduction on the weekly offer. Uh, the operation of base root uh, uh, suffered a 52% reduction. They, they closed 20% of the stations. And they reached a, a new uh, uh, optimized scheduling uh, two months after the beginning of, of the COVID. Okay. Um, okay. To, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm seeing that I'm getting quite long, so I'm, I'm going to uh, be fast on, on my last uh, remarks. Uh, in the last four or five years, this move towards getting equipped with external solution is becoming a kind of landslide, as we are seeing through the continuous flow of tenders arriving into the market. But at the same time, the move was, is changing of nature, as a technological revolution towards digitalization brings new solution and new acceleration around the three tools, big data, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Uh, is bringing uh, uh, a lot of information that uh, we are starting to use into our tools. We are speaking about running times and travel times. We are speaking about real-time passenger demand, about guarantee for rolling stock and other infrastructure components, engineers and drivers' behavior, weather conditions, competition, competition promotion fares, uh, not only from other transportation board, but from new competitors in our core business. Uh, and this a flow of data, uh, this flow of data and the capacity to analyze it uh, and extract optimized action and, an ex and to extract optimized actions to be in the token, improve uh, incredibly the capacity and, and, and uh, the future of optimization. It will impact first uh, row uh, the passengers who will recover the central position uh, because the competition between transportation modes will be the, uh, where the trotter, for example, competes with the bus and the subway with, uh, in urban environments are going to change completely the situation because the, the demand to access to public transport from people which don't access today, for example, in our suburban and rural areas, are changing the things because uh, of the power of social medias and iLeak rage, because of, of competition, the switching of, of um, uh, policies against uh, the usage in, in vehicle uh, the usage of private cars in, in cities. All this is going to, to change the data. And, and where we are speaking about uncertainty times, I, I should um, say that, that more than uh, uh, uncertain, they are extremely volatile times. Uh, um, Eric, uh, I, I, it's, it's a fascinating content, and I don't want to interrupt you there. And I think the audience is enjoying that. I can see from the chat messages. But um, we, I want to uh, give enough time for the panel discussion. Yes, um, we, yes. We're due to end in five minutes time. I think I think we should uh, extend by 10, 15 minutes the, the, the session. But I think uh, if you can uh, make your last uh, last comment there, uh, and then we yes. can move on to the uh, panel discussion. OK, I, I will be. I will be. Uh, Try to be very, very fast. Okay. What, Thank you. what we are seeing is that uh, uh, this a flow of data uh, coming from all kind of 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 uh, 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 sources. Um, it's um, arriving at the same time that we have to face these uh, uh, certain times the, 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 uh, where where when what we we thought. Uh, the uh, impact on on demand or or offer was going to be limited to one, two, or three percent per year. Uh, we we are seeing that it can 
can go up 70 or 80 percent, sometimes even 90 percent. And um, and um, uh, thanks to God, uh, all these new tools uh, which help us to uh, 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 get the data, analyze it, and, and transform it into actions with uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence are bringing um, our tools to another um, roof. Um, and the uh, goal system, uh, I suppose, like other editors, uh, is uh, actively working on building these new tools uh, that will help uh, uh, operators face these new challenges. Um, um, and uh, and uh, uh, because if there is no collaboration between operators and editors, uh, things will get much longer and will be much more difficult. You operators have the knowledge uh, and experience of uh, the, the data, uh, the experience of what you have done, how you have faced disruptions and incidents until now. Uh, and um, uh, what uh, we pretend is that uh, on our optimization tool, uh, we uh, add uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence in order to uh, combine it with the uh, new data we, we can uh, access, uh, um, deliver much, much better solutions um, and much flexible solutions. Thank you for your attention. Yeah. Thank you, Rick. That was indeed fascinating, uh, the journey that you've taken us on. So uh, how much time do we have, Jules? Uh, I just want to reset the clock a bit. Um, yes, I, I suggest uh, it's, it's, it's due to end now, but I suggest we continue uh, for 10, 15, maybe 15 minutes. Um, uh, as long as some of uh, as long as the speakers are available uh, to uh, to stay on, um, uh, and I think it'd be good to have a, a little bit of a, a, a Q and A time, a panel discussion time at, at the end. Okay, so uh, I think let's uh, let's accept one fact: uh, when all systems shut down, uh, the railways keep on running. In my experience, globally. Uh, when air shuts down, when road shuts down, the railways still keep them running, and it's really the last system that goes down. Yeah, that's also the reason why, in global disaster management plans, uh, the railway system is very much part of the mix. Sorry, I cannot hear anything. Is anybody hearing anything? Uh, yes, I can hear yeah, the window. Um, okay, I cannot. Kurt, maybe, Kurt, if you can uh, um, refresh your browser, there, yeah. there's something wrong with the uh, platform. We'll, we'll take it up with the uh, platform uh, and, and um, uh, uh, supplier. But if you can uh, refresh your browser, sometimes it works. Yeah, okay. So yeah. while we wait Davinde, for Kurt to yes, come please. back, yeah. Yeah. while we wait for Kurt to come back, and so, uh, you know, for example, in South Asia and India, which is very heavy dependent on railways, when the railways said that they were shutting down because of the pandemic, I can tell you that there, there was disbelief uh, in India on that. And it also was the first mass system to open uh, before any other system opened. And there was social pressures and people pressures to get the railways running. So uh, I think some of the uh, actions that have been taken globally to keep the railways running uh, during the pandemic and also post pandemic responses uh, have done good credit to the community. Uh, while we wait for Kurt to come back, uh, Lukman, if you can hear me, I was uh, I was thinking that uh, you know uh, in large systems, uh, you know large organizations like, for example, the NJ Transit, uh, IT systems face a problem of being you know rather legacy. Uh, one thing that is clearly proved is that we need to be nimble and we need to change quickly. Uh, that that clearly COVID shows that even the markets are showing that. So. How do you how do you plan to develop, you know, some kind of an agility and a nimble, uh, uh, you know, response going going into the future for for NG Transit? Uh, okay, yeah, thanks, um, Devinder. Uh, I hope the audience can hear me at least. Um, so you know, IT systems used to be 
work, uh, the KPIs we used to look at is availability and uptime. You know, those KPIs are old. You know, availability was, is my system up and available, you know, 99.99 uptime and are they reliable? Now it's all about resiliency. So we know that systems will go down. So can we build uh, uh, the systems in such a way that they are the last to go down and first to come back up? And that duration should be as small as possible. So, the, you know, cybersecurity has, has mastered that because they have figured out that we will get attacked by cyber. And how do we ensure that our systems go down last and come back up first? We need to just carry the same formula over on the uh, you know non cyber side as well. I hope I hope that answers your question. Okay. Yep. Uh, I mean, yes, of course. Uh, the the challenge between uh, you know the customer experience and the user experience is always a difficult one to bridge, but I. Of course, on some of the actions that you're taking clearly shows that. Uh, Kurt, are you back? Jules, have we cut? Have we cut on the? Uh, yes, Kurt. Yes, I think I'm back. Is... Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Kurt. Right. Uh, David Descartes is uh, here. Yeah. Okay. So, Kurt, uh, how do you see the situation? Uh, regarding the travel demand and uh, uh, how quickly is it picking up? What do you see uh, in the future for Austria? Yeah, that was my poll question, right? And um, there's no clear forecast. What I personally think is that the way we work will change due to the pandemic. We can see now um, how easy it actually is to make phone conferences, to work digital. And if only, I don't know, 20 or 30 percent of business travel is being reduced in the future, this means a, a huge loss for the transport system because this is typically a high yield segment where aviation and airlines earn money with. And if this is reduced, this is a, a huge topic. So it's not only how much travel demand there is, but how much yield and how much willingness to pay there is. And I think it's really too early to see whether there's a real paradigm shift in the way we live or after we had uh, through this valley of despair, um, we will actually see figures which we've seen in 2019, where the world was crazy in international mobility. Um, so I don't have a clear answer on that. Nobody knows, I guess. Okay. Uh, to come um, back to you, Eric. Can, this, can, uh, can I um, ask um, everyone or the speakers to mute your mics while you're not talking, please? There's a bit of a, a background noise. So obviously, you know, when you're not talking, uh, only if you can mute your mic, please. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I think we just lost Eric. Oh, Eric, can you hear us? Uh, no, I think he just dropped off. I think he's trying to refresh. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, yes, so Kurt, let me let me stay stay on on you for a moment. And uh, uh, you know, clearly, uh, I was reading up, and I see the uh, the kind of uh, changes that you're making to the timetable, and the the problems in terms of interconnection of trains and. Uh, you know, the, the going into foreign countries uh, with your links. So, I mean, really, I, I mean, if you could just share a little more of uh, how how did you integrate this, you know, rather inflexible problem of uh, railway scheduling and timetabling in such a such a short time? Yeah, we kind of were forced to because for in some countries we, for example, were simply not allowed to go anymore because uh, there were borders closed and our employees were not allowed to enter the country. So in some cases, we really just had to do it because there was this legal ne necessity. Um, and uh, we had, um, what we did is we really, in this week where the shutdown was coming from one country to the other in Europe, we were basically sitting a small group of experts sitting together 24 hours a day, more or less, really working for a few days on all the things which have to be done in order to re-timetable re Austria. And uh, I mean, 
if all experts work together 24 hours a day, you can achieve awfully lot within a very short period of time. So that's the only answer I can give you in such outstanding times. Those who have the knowledge and those who can take the decisions. It's all, always takes those two parties, the experts and the decision makers, and then you can do it. And of course, um, we had some, some things happen which were, were not planned to happen. But overall, I must say, we did a pretty good job without too much friction. And we kept those services running where there was obviously still demand to do so. Yeah, thanks, Kurt. So, uh, Eric, if you just uh, heard what Kurt said, and I think, uh, you know, this, this kind of presents a challenge uh, to the kind of thing that things that Kurt is doing and the kind of new applications that Lukman is looking at. So companies like Gold Systems, how, how can you all bring it all together to make sure that that agility and nimbleness uh, and all the technologies that are available today are, are you know, come to the help of, uh, you know, railway managers in addressing such uncertainty? Eric, could you hear me? Eric? Jules, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Davinder. I think we're, we're, we're facing yeah. our own technical <laughs> difficulties yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, at yeah. the moment. Um, so I suggest, why don't we go back to the audience and uh, take some questions from there, if you can. Yes, so um, we, we have some questions in the Q&A um, uh, uh, a, a part of the uh, chat panel. Um, maybe you can pick up some of those questions from there, uh, Davinder. Uh, I'm trying to do that. Uh, And, uh, and the published uh, 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 section there. Uh, I'm not able to see it in my chat. Okay, so it's 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 uh, it's in the Q and A um, next to chat. Um, uh, just just give me a second. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I can see that now. Yeah. So if you can look under published uh, section there. So um, so th those are the questions being being asked. Okay. So uh, so Kurt, there's a question being asked that you know when you uh, you know click on your Uber app and then when the cab arrives, you have been uh, informed that it's been uh, sanitized uh, just after the last passenger or a little while ago. Uh, so are you have you introduced some kind of a system that allows people to be assured that before they board a train, even in, even even between stations, when some passenger may have left a seat, that that particular seat is sanitized. Yes. What we did actually is, um, of course, Kurt, we... Could take that, please. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Kurt. Excellent. So I think, yeah. Yes, let's, let's the continue there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what we did is several things. First of all, we, op of course, immediately um, increased the cleaning cycles. However, um, you can tell a passenger a million times this has been sanitized. They don't believe you. What really works is they need to see it. So what we increased is the cleaning during the trips. And our trains travel 12, 14, 16 hours from one, uh, from one old uh, from one station or from the terminus to terminus. And what we really increased is the cleaning during the operation of the train. So people were able to see that somebody's coming and wiping over the tables and taking away the rubbish. And this really brings back the confidence. They need to see it because if they ch you can assure them a million times by uh, information or by apps or whatever, but if they really see that something happens, this is a totally different thing. Yeah, David, did you hear the answer? Yes, uh, yeah. I did. Yeah, thank you, Kurt, for that. And uh, uh, Maria is asking, how do you balance what is technically logical with what is socially logical? Uh, and where do you go uh, in this? And I would request uh, Lukman if you could come in first on this, because this is is this is a very fundamental question uh, that people are asking and that policymakers are trying to grapple with. Uh, uh, how does one balance what is technically logical and what is socially logical? And Lukman, if you could go first on this. 
Um, I think Lukman has uh, had to excuse himself. He, he, he had another appointment uh, at, um, at this time. So we have Eric and, and Kurt now, I think, available. Okay, so let me go to Kurt with this one because this is again an operational question. So we'll come back to Eric in a while. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's totally tricky. And I would not only say technically and socially, but also financially. You always have those three components. And at the end of the day, uh, there is no no one-way solution because each problem is different. And the best thing is view the problem of all those three perspectives, technically, commercially, and politically, or from the society point of view. At the end of the day, you need to decide who's paying your pill, uh, your bill. Is it worse, I don't know, to lose some money on what you're doing, or is it worse to have a bad reputation in public? And that's how you finally do the decision and balance. You always have to balance, but you need to understand who is most affected, who is then the loudest, and what is a certain in a certain situation the, the best solution overall, also in storytelling. We live in a public world. It's a lot of about storytelling. And our story is we are the railway of the Austrians. We are here to so serve the Austrians and to serve society. Uh, and that's our, uh, um, yeah, that's how we finally do decisions, never totally not taking into account the financial and the technical implications, of course, because something, sometimes something which is from a society point of view very much wanted is simply, simply technically not possible, or something which is technically possible cannot be achieved because financially it kills you. So there is no, no simple answer as so often. It's always a balancing and at the and to make a clear decision. Yeah, thanks, Kurt. Uh, Eric uh, Farhat is asking a question. He says that uh, there was a mention made of uh, we can avoid security disasters with enhanced traceability features. So, so what exactly is this? And I think what Farhat also, uh, you know, mentions uh, about uh, uh, you know data issues, etc. Uh, this was a mention, perhaps, by by Lukman. When he talked of the NJ transit, but uh, if you could weigh in on this, uh, Eric, from your from your data science background, Jules, can you hear Eric? No, unfortunately, I cannot hear Eric. Okay, I think maybe you can address these questions. And I'm sorry, I will something. have to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's that's most of the questions that sort of taken care of. Uh, maybe you can ask uh, uh, the participants to raise a hand in case uh, something we have missed out of the questions. I think that's that approximately answers it. Yes. Um, so thank you very much, um, uh, uh, Davinde, and um, thank you to Kurt, Lukman, and Eric for this session. And I, I'm sorry that uh, um, uh, there, there's some technical issues that prevented us from having a full full debate um, uh, as, as we had envisaged. Um, uh, Davinde, if you want to make a, just a final um, uh, concluding remarks uh, there, and, and, and then um, I will uh, um, I will make the, the last uh, um, uh, the comments at the end. Yeah, so, so thank you so much, Kurt, uh, Lukman, Eric, and I. Uh, Lukman is not there, but I think you can convey uh, our appreciation of uh, uh, the NJ Transit initiatives and the Austrian Rail initiatives. And, and goal systems uh, plans for the future and what they've done. But I think if I was to wrap up the sense that I, I got out of all of us uh, presenting and uh, the, the questions that came from the audience uh, is that yes, I mean, times are difficult, uh, but we are, we are optimistic and we are hopeful. Uh, services are picking up 50% level, 60% level, uh, but it is all about being nimble and all about being uh, well equipped to manage the change process. Uh, I also think the fact that uh, uh, the railways is a is a disciplined system, both in terms of the the manpower as, as well as the technical systems that go into it, running to a, running to robust standards. I think that's something that that's that's helping us do that. 
it would also seem that we we do have the tools to you know to carry on doing the good work uh, that we've been doing, whether they are lying in systems or they are lying in processes or or they are lying in technology. Uh, but the important part is, uh, you know, which I thought which you know we would discuss, but which is very uh, dear to me in the sense that this is a a reset point in people's uh, travel preferences that allows us to make a modal shift, uh, you know, from road to rail uh, as being greener, as being safer, uh, and as being the preferred choice, especially when you start looking at distances between 200 kilometers to 500 kilometers. And, and considering the, 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 the experiences and the quick reactions that have been shared by practitioners, I think this is the right time for all of us to take this challenge in the uh, from from both uh, I also think that it's very important that uh, uh, forums like the one that uh, that is, that have been created by the International Women's Summit are uh, made more frequent. This is a time for us, uh, all of us to remain connected and keep on sharing the difficulties we face. At the same time, the the, the solutions that we that, that we're bringing about some of the examples that all of us are sharing. Uh, so I think it's been uh, it's been a little. 20 minutes over the time, but I think it's been worth it. Uh, talking to the practitioners as well as uh, work from goal safety, about how we can leverage technology and bring it all together in a simple way. So it's been a wonderful evening, and thank you so much. Back to you. Thank you very much, David. Uh, time for all of us to be connected, indeed. Um, and I think this is. Uh, um, difficult times, uh, and, and it's very important that we are all uh, um, share our knowledge, best practices uh, between different uh, um, uh, operators, authorities, and, and uh, technical experts. Um, so um, I, I appreciate uh, um, uh, your uh, uh, participation, um, uh, Kurt uh, Bauer, Lukman Fazel, Eric Casillas, and and Davinda Sandu. Uh, this uh, 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 for this uh, session today. And, and thank you to audience for your patience as well. We had the uh, numerous uh, technical issues today, but we we uh, we managed to get here. Um, so just before we go, um, uh, just uh, uh, a couple of uh, uh, announcement information. So we are um, next uh, webinar that we are organising will be uh, regarding uh, uh, managing passenger flow in stations post lockdown. Um, so this is a part of the um, series that we are organising together with the Swiss uh, Federal Railways (SBB) on the power of digital to inspire passenger confidence. Um, so we'll be talking about this uh, um, uh, 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 very important topic: how how we manage uh, passenger flow in stations. Um, uh, joined by SBB, Keolis, and uh, and Biovo, um, uh, and moderated by uh, a UIC. Uh, so um, do do join us for this session. It's uh, uh, in uh, a few weeks, three weeks time, twentieth of November, um, uh, at uh, the same time, two o'clock. Uh, Central European time. Um, we are also, we've just announced the next uh, um, our, our annual summit, International Railway Summit, uh, to be uh, in uh, uh, online format. I'm sorry about the camera, it's, it's uh, not showing it properly. Um, uh, it will be in February uh, next year, uh, 23rd to 26th of February, um, and it will take place uh, online uh, platform. Uh, um, the theme is reimagining re rail innovation to get society back on sustainable track. Um, so this will be um, uh, three days of uh, uh, conference sessions and, uh, and a lot of uh, interactive uh, um, uh, uh, features available, and, and there'll be a lot of networking. There'll be a, a lot of one-to-one uh, -one meetings that we uh, we we organising based on the uh, uh, um, uh, matchmaking that we do. Um, so the meetings will take place for four days. Conference sessions will be three days: Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday um, uh, during this uh, uh, week. So do get in touch with us uh, for more information about this summit, and uh, we look forward to. Uh, seeing uh, many of you in the next uh, uh, webinar and at the summit coming up in February next year. So thank you once again for taking part in um, uh, this uh, uh, session um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again uh, sometime soon. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>